Hello, welcome to another episode of Poetry in the PM. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, how are you guys doing? Um, thank you for joining me. Um, God, we've been doing this uh, for so long, but it's really it's really flown by. It's it's kind of incredible that you guys have followed me thus far and had interest in this, and we've had some pretty amazing chats and. Um, you know, something definitely that, you know, um, I've been surprised at or, 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 um, I guess just, just, um, happy about is that it's continuing to change. You know, this is continuing to evolve. And even after all this time, it's still, um, it's still changing, you know? I mean, I think, uh, just most recently the newest element was, was having Jada, uh, come on, you know, welcoming uh, uh, a viewer on to do the live with me, someone I didn't know, and um, and have them share a poet poem, and uh, and that was really cool. And uh, we had her on twice now, and I hope to have um, some other of you, uh, some other people um, um, on the show as well to read and share your poems. Um, it's it's such an amazing way to just kind of connect and and uh, learn about each other, learn about each other's cultures, each other's experiences, and most importantly, how we're all connected and quite similar and go through the similar struggles. Art is so beautiful in that way. Film, music, poetry it sort of connects us. It shows us that no matter where we are in the world, no matter what our gender is, where wherever we were born and what time, there are just universal concepts that we will always all relate to. So. Um, today I have an amazing, uh, guest, um, Athena Karkanis. She's coming on. Uh, we actually don't know each other. We've not met, but we've been communicating for the past couple of weeks. I've been trying to get her on. Um, she's an amazing actress. She's uh, done a ton of work, uh, not just live action, but also in animation and gaming, which is another amazing industry that I'm, I'm definitely starting to break into now, which has been a lot of fun. So I actually can't wait to, uh, chat to her about that. But um, she speaks a couple languages and she's going to come on and she's going to read um, a poem or two maybe. And uh, I can't wait for uh, you all to meet her and I can't wait to meet her too. So I'm going to bring her on and see if I can't uh, start this chat with Athena with enormous um, technological difficulty. Which is always the case. No. We're do we've been doing pretty good. We've been doing pretty good so far. Hi. Hello, Athena. Hi. How are you? Oh, it's amazing. I've been having some technological difficulties sometimes with some people who have Androids, and it, like oh. it freezes, and so I assume you have an iPhone. I do. Yeah. And that's why it works perfectly. Oh, good. I'm so happy you have an iPhone. Good. You Amazing. saved uh, a lot of time. Well, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. Likewise, this is such a cool thing that you're doing, and so. Thank you happy to be a part of it. I'm Thank you. I'm happy we, we uh, got to make it work out. I know you've been busy and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm happy that we finally uh, settled on a date to have you on. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, and so uh, for those of you that don't know, we, we share the same management, uh, Athena and I, and that's sort of how we got uh, connected. Um, but um, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself, uh, where you come from, your heritage, your culture, uh, where you live now, and, and how you sort of came to be. Well, I have to say, I noticed when you were doing your intro, um, the Toronto love that you've got up on the wall behind yes. you, um, which is where I am and where I live and where I call home. Amazing. Yes. Canadians. Yeah. <laughs> we find each other. We find each other. Appreciate <laughs> we it. We walk. I like to say to my American friends, we walk among you because people are always like, yes. what? You're <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, there's a, I'm in Los Angeles, but there's certainly no shortage of uh, people from Toronto and Canada here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, how's Toronto? I miss Toronto. It's great. It's good. We've had um, like beautiful weather lately, so it just makes it just so great. I mean, so much you know, better. Yeah. Crazy circumstances. That was uh, a long winter you guys had for sure. Yeah, yeah, but it's just um, it's great. I I I've had this. I don't, um, I don't want to waste the poetry time, but I've had this amazing uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, silver lining that um, I've lived on this street in Parkdale. I don't know if you know the neighborhood for I've, a really long time. I lived in Parkdale uh, in college. It's so funny. Oh, get out. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I've lived There's on this. J Jameson and uh, Laxton. Oh, okay. So you're a little further west than I am. But um, I live on like one of these little streets. It's like all mm -hmm. kind of. 
and um, I've lived here for many years and not really known my neighbors. Like I knew the neighbors directly to one side and directly to the other and the guy after that and the people across the street just to say hi. But mm -hmm. um, we started doing the pot banging um, every evening at 7.30 to thank the essential workers and people who continue to work, which then turned, there's a long-term care home um, a couple blocks away, which oh, okay. actually some cases and I think some deaths as well. For and sure. so the pot banging several weeks ago kind of turned into a, a SODIS parade down to the long-term care center and we bang pots there and the nurses come to the wow. window come to the windows and through and it's continued that way and through that I have met and like become friendly with and exchanged plants you know like perennials or seedlings and um, there's there's a couple of teenagers who have been taking my kids every day and playing with them like not expecting babysitting money just like doing it and there's also a family you know just up the street across the street who have two kids the same age as my two kids and they are now besties and it's just been this amazing i feel kind of ashamed that i didn't know any of these people existed you know beforehand um the teenagers are both ballet dancers one of them is quite like quite serious and they've been teaching this saturday afternoon ballet class to the kids where they stand wow up. your neighborhood and your community <laughs> is like happening i gotta say it's like it has been the best, you know, like, obviously, this is awful. And like many people have died or gotten sick or lost their jobs. And yeah. so many horrible things has happened. But there's this one like lovely thing. But that we I... all know that, though, Athena, you know, we all know that that's not like what yeah. people aren't talking about are, are the good things for sure. Yeah, that's getting yeah. less attention, which um, been... I think we need to bring more attention to also the good things, the silver linings, you know, what I mean, yeah. the positive moments, these, these stories. And sure, I think your experience is experience of, of many people who, who now in this time have had more time uh, to interact with their community and get to know them better because we're not all busy, busy, busy rushing from thing to thing to thing uh, where you barely yeah. sort of see your neighbor as maybe you're taking the trash out once a week or something like that. Uh, but now it's like yeah. we're spending all this time inside. We can see each other through our windows or outside. And, and so, yeah, definitely. Uh, I haven't had that experience, like ending in a parade to, a senior living home that's that's pretty remarkable but uh but yeah I've definitely been connecting with with my community here as well more now that we have more time to just kind of be at home um but that's amazing that you've gotten like help with your kids and like sharing plants and different that's so yeah. cool and also i mean it's not just that like there's also been some like community organizing and political organizing around you know like uh, helping people who are who you know have lost their jobs or whatever or people who can't go out and shop and we've got this whole like kind of email network and they'll send out and say like, there's a, you know, a family on this street who needs these things. Is anyone shopping today? And just for total, not, not the neighbor. That's you know, great. Like just, That's great. Is that like just something you guys created? Is that a website or like, it's kind, it's kind of just an, like, it needs to, I think, progress to like a Facebook group or something, but it's just an email, like a list of emails right now. We've our pod, like of my street has connected with other pods. So sometimes those requests for like somebody who can't grocery shop and needs help will come from totally. another pod. They'll reach out to our pod and say, is anyone, you know, doing this or whatever. And it's just, I love it's Toronto. Nice. I love Toronto. Yeah, it's really, uh, science has been that helping other people makes you feel better. So yeah, scientifically proven. And yes, definitely uh, very aware of that. Help other people to feel better. Yeah. No, yeah. I've been hearing some 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 similar stories of people on Facebook groups and stuff like that that have been sort of getting their communities together and making these pages where you know, hey, we found out that this person just lost their job. They could really appreciate some some groceries or like you know, um, this is their email if you want to interact. You know, send them like five or ten bucks or something like that. And if you know thirty <laughs> people do that, that's like pretty damn good, right? So. Um, there's a lot of ways to help our community. So that's uh, that's a great thing that you guys are doing. That's awesome. God, yeah. Parkdale. It's so funny you just said Parkdale. It just like took me back like to college yeah. and like, whoa, my brain's like <laughs> stuck there now. Um, I remember there's this place on Jameson and King called Mother India, which had the oh. most amazing Indian food ever. Yeah, the um, most amazing. Go there. I would go there and get like butter chicken roti for like best, five bucks. Best rotis, yeah. yeah. Yeah, amazing 
whenever we order from there, we order like a few days worth because we're like, we're going to want leftovers. Let's just order like three different rotis. Oh, yeah. And that's the kind of food that like last couple of days, it's like so delicious. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, how do you speak all these languages? And how uh, tell me a little bit about um, your, your family and your heritage and all that? Oh, um, well, that would take a lot of time. <laughs> I'm, okay. well, I'm he's very um, kind of mixed, mixed platter. Um, yeah. And I, I speak French because I went to French school from kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I just kind of like started pay, my both my parents also speak a lot of languages. And I kind mm -hmm. of started just collecting them and once you learn one like another one is easier you know like after learning French I learned Spanish and then once I spoke French and Spanish then like Italian is like basically you already speak it and you know so it would just kind of study languages I I um, always like to travel a lot and in fact as a kid even my parents um, worked in international development so sometimes we would like travel live to work and stuff yeah and it's just I just find it such amazing way to connect with people if you speak their language you know like it's so nice to like go visit Cuba but if you can actually have like a conversation with someone you know about like their life and like real things like it's you know I realize obviously that's a luxury that not everyone has but sure. it's really it's a nice way to connect with people if you can yes, actually I, I think I think it kind of works both ways too that you know if someone from that country sees that you speak their language like they they kind of open up you know what I mean they mm -hmm. they kind of give more of themselves to you than they would have probably you know right yeah um so definitely yeah it's 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 fun like I'm Italian I speak Italian and so when I go to Italy um I, I always just kind of in a way take it for granted you know what I mean but when I go with friends or, or my wife and I see these other people kind of struggling to communicate I'm like oh my god yes that's that would be so difficult to not be able to do this uh, and have to sort of like use your hands a lot and, yeah. you know, charades basically. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, tell me a little bit about um, these, uh, these poems that you brought today. Um, so I picked two. Okay. Uh, one um, is in French. Uh, it's called Être humain autrement, which would translate to, to be human differently. Um, and it's by a, a, uh, um, a poet called Suleiman Diamanka. He's um, uh, Senegalese. I think he's French and Senegalese, like mm -hmm. dual, person, but French Senegalese. And I just, when I read it, I was like, oh, this is so perfect for these times. Like, mm. it, I mean, it's, we were talking about this earlier in the conversation about how, you know, we've, we've all just been so rushed and like rushing in and out of your house and, you know, like not really knowing our communities and not coming together and being very, especially politically in the last couple of years, I feel like at least in the West, it's become very divided and very us and them. And, you know, yeah. and I feel like, you know, and maybe another silver lining of COVID-19 is that it has kind of made us realize like we are really all, in this together like really truly we are you know like we're this is it is like one planet we're all on it and we're so much closer to one another than we think yeah and we can't advance alone we can only advance by putting no, our heads exactly. together for sure absolutely yeah exactly um and so this poem just kind of speaks to that and i thought it was sort of perfect for these times beautiful all right well yeah let's let's, let's do this first one and uh, i iPad actually just died, so I'm, I'm going to actually ask you to read the English um, oh, as well, okay. if you don't if you don't mind. Sure, no, I don't. I'm, mind. I'm sorry to spring that on you. I, I normally, but my my iPad literally just died. I'm I'm very embarrassed. Um, okay, all right, take it away. Um, do you want me to read the English first or second? Second. Okay. <clears throat> Hang on. Être humain autrement, et si toi aussi. Ton arbre généalogique est un eucalyptus arc-en-ciel. Si toi aussi, tu connais la magie du mélange des matières que seul l'art t'enseigne. Si toi aussi, tu as déjà entendu parler de la légende du déluge et de la grande arche ancienne. Alors, tu sais que l'humanité ne compte qu'un seul peuple vu de tout là-haut. Un seul peuple avec plusieurs langues, plusieurs cultures et plusieurs couleurs de peau. Et si toi aussi, 
Tu songes que la paix se prépare bien en amont là-bas, dans les poèmes d'amour. Si tu es capable d'apprendre à parler tous les dialectes du monde, dans un véritable acte de bravoure. Car la différence ne sert qu'à la complémentarité des savoirs et que cette sève-là se savoure. Alors, tu sais que l'humanité ne compte qu'un seul peuple vu de tout là-haut, un seul peuple avec plusieurs langues, plusieurs cultures et plusieurs couleurs de peau. Et si toi aussi, dans le silence de la cité, tu sollicites les étoiles pour qu'elles te situent, quelque part entre la fibre de ton âme et la teinte du tissu dont elle est issue. En relevant les empreintes digitales de l'histoire, en recherchant des gens qui te ressemblent dessus. Alors, souviens-toi que l'humanité ne compte qu'un seul peuple vu de tout là-haut. Un seul peuple avec plusieurs langues, plusieurs cultures et plusieurs couleurs de peau. Parce que la différence ne sert qu'à la complémentarité des savoirs et que cette sève-là se savoure. Il est temps d'être humain autrement et de remettre au monde notre amour. C'est so beautiful. I have um, chicken skin. This poem. <laughs> I only understood bits of it and I have uh, goosebumps. <laughs> okay, so I have to just um, go into my email and pull up the email that I sent you. Yeah, no okay. So while she's figuring that out, um, you know, uh, I am an actor, so I have access to a lot of actors and I, I bring them on the show to, to read poetry. And it's not that I, you know, discriminate against other people, but I mean, just seeing her read that, it's, it's It's because the way actors bring words to life is so powerful. And even though I couldn't understand a lot of the things that Athena was saying, because she's an actress, I was able to feel what she was saying. And she, she was performing that. It wasn't just this cold reading. She was really, you know, conveying the, the meaning and the feeling of this, these, these words. And so um, it's, it's just such a gift and a treat to, to have actors uh, come on and, and, and read poetry because they really treat it with that, uh, the, The dramatic touch that's needed to really uh, convey the message of the poet. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so this, I have to stress, is an unofficial translation. Um, I could not find an official translation of this poem. Yeah. Um, so the title again, To Be Human Differently by Suleiman Diamanka. And if you too, your family tree is a rainbow eucalyptus, If you too, you know the magic of the mixture of materials that only art can teach. And if you too, you have heard of the legend of the flood and the great ancient ark, then you know that humanity is but one people seen from way up above, but one people with many languages, many cultures, and many colors of skin. If you too, you dream that peace is prepared well in advance down there in the love poems. If you are capable of learning to speak, oh, that's not what I wanted to, sorry. <laughs> If you're able to learn all the dialects of the world in a true act of bravery. For difference only serves to complement knowledge and that sap should be savored. Then you know that humanity is but one people seen from way up above but one people with many languages, many cultures, and many colors of skin. If you too, in the silence of the city, solicit the stars so that they find you, somewhere between the fiber of your soul and the color of the cloth from which it is cut, in lifting fingerprints from history, in looking for people who resemble you upon it, then remember that humanity is but one people, seen from way up above, but one people with many languages, many cultures, and many colors of skin, because difference only serves to complement knowledge and that sap should be savored. It's time to be human differently and give back our love to the world. Yeah, especially that, that last statement, super powerful and very apropos and very like, right now kind of what we need yeah so 
um, God, there was some beautiful, what was that line about the same cloth that your soul was cut from or something? Can you say that line again? That was gorgeous. Yes. Like sitting and soliciting the stars. And like, yes, I know my favorite part too, actually. Oh my God. If you so two in the silence of the city solicit the, star solicit the stars so that they find you somewhere between the fiber of your soul and the color of the cloth from which it is cut. Yeah, wow, what a line. Mm -hmm. Beautiful images. Wow. It also sounds really pretty in French because the words actually sound the same. So it's like mm -hmm. a really nice illustration. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, these are great. Wow, what a great poem you brought. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, should we roll straight into the next? Sure, yeah. Tell us about this next one. So the next one I picked is, um, it's just a love poem, a love sonnet of okay. Pablo who is my favorite poet and maybe that's cheesy because he's like so famous and everybody knows oh. him but oh. i just love but there's a reason there's a reason why right <laughs> like, yeah. it's like yeah we all love meryl street too <laughs> you know yeah right exactly <laughs> uh and anyway i love i love pablo neruda i love the way he writes love and so this isn't really to do with you know our current climate but you know it's always important to remember love and this one is um particularly poignant because it's kind of about well and maybe it can be applied to now because it's kind of about love how love can be excruciating sometimes and, and um he and you know definitely we are feeling that now is we're like trapped in our homes with each other and even the people we love can frustrate us and you know so i don't think that's exactly what he's saying but just to know that there are many colors of love and that it's not sure. all like yeah. you know tulips and roses and that sometimes it's frustration definitely and... not but that's a part of it that's just like yeah. it's like you have if you want to love love you have to love all of love you know what i mean and if you have if you want to love someone you have to love all of them you know what i mean yeah it's a great kind of metaphor for that for sure and love through that you know we have to love through our arguments and our differences know, yes all that yeah okay <clears throat> It doesn't have a title because it's a sonnet. It has a number, which is not interesting. So I won't read it. Okay. Also because I don't remember what it is because it's in Roman numerals. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I have to help you with that after. We'll, we'll, we'll look at it. I'm Roman. I can, I can probably figure it out. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> no te quiero, sino porque te quiero. Y de quererte a no quererte llevo. Y de esperarte cuando no te espero, pasa mi corazón del frío al fuego. Te quiero solo porque a ti te quiero, te odio sin fin, y odiándote te ruego. Y la medida de mi amor viajero es no verte y amarte como un ciego. Tal vez consumirá la luz de enero su rayo cruel mi corazón entero, robándome la llave del sosiego. En esta historia, solo yo me muero y, mo y moriré de amor porque te quiero. Porque te quiero, amor, a sangre y fuego. English, ahora? Yes, please. I know this one very well. Beautiful poem. Oh, you? Yes. Hello. And you might know a different translation because I think a lot of people have translated him. But. I do not love you except because I love you. I go from loving you. I go from loving to not loving you. From waiting to not waiting for you. My heart moves from the cold into the fire. I love you only because it's you I love. I hate you no end. And hating you bend to you and the measure of my changing love for you is that i do not see you but love you blindly maybe the january light will consume my heart with its cruel ray stealing my key to true calm in this part of the story i am the one who dies the only one and i will die of love because i love you because I love you, love, in fire and in blood. 
beautiful. It's 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 funny how it's like almost like you can. It almost seemed at times like he was he was almost referring to like being in love with love itself, like <laughs> being in love with the idea of love, like how amazing it is just to be in love. And then you realize, oh, but you know, it's unrequited or like, oh, they don't love me back or, oh no, you know what I mean? But for, just for that moment when you realize you are in love, it's like the mo it's like lightning has struck, you know what I mm. mean? So just like even being in love with the idea of love. Um, uh, yeah, and like, and all the, the twists and turns that it takes and um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a gorgeous poem, that one for sure. For sure. You read a lot of uh, Neruda. He's like one of your favorites, you were saying? I do. In fact, I have in my backyard, in my garden, I have a path made of um, garden stones that I made years ago. They're like these circles. I, somebody gave me this kit from a garden store where you can sort of make these cement circles, mm -hmm. like stepping stones, and it has yeah. little like, letter stamps. And there's this one, I almost chose it for this, but then I was like, meh. Um, but there's this one Neruda poem that just so perfectly described my garden. And so I wrote it on these stones and it's kind of like a little pathway that goes through the garden. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So you get to have it every day as you walk through your garden. Yeah. When it's summer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 amazing amazing so i was i was uh doing some research on you uh before bringing you on and i saw that you had like a ton of experience with video games and, and animation mm -hmm. how did that kind of um find its way to you and how has that kind of shaped you know your work is it something you love doing is it something that uh you know you love doing live action better or how did that kind of evolve um i've been doing it forever I remember my first um, animation, like regular character on an, an animated series. Yeah. I got the job. It was, I was um, bartending as almost every actor does. And I just remember having this like horrible weekend and being treated terribly yeah. and just not making enough money and just like, ugh, like this, I hate this. And so I just quit. And I was like, I don't have a, plan B, but I'm just, I'm not doing this anymore. Like I'll yeah. figure something else out. And then the very next week I got my first like regular animated series. And I was like, oh, build it and they will come. Um, but that doesn't have anything to do with how your question, but it is kind of a nice no, story. No, it is. <laughs> um, but I think, I, I mean, I started doing it a long time ago. I just thought I wanted to do cartoons. I thought it would be something that I'd be good at. Um, because I, you know, I can do a lot of accents and I like to play kind of crazy characters and cartoons are really amazing for that because you have such, like, it doesn't matter what you look like, which is often a frustration, you know, for us sure. in this, sure. that you're too young or too old or too skinny or too tall or too brown or like not brown enough or whatever. Um, and so, you know, like I played a piece of sushi, like a, you know, <laughs> doesn't matter. Like yeah, really... that's awesome. Um, and I love it. It's so. Yeah, what are they going to be like? You're not, you're not salmon-y enough. You're not, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I, I've been doing this series um, for many years called Wild Kratz, which is on PBS. And it's also on Netflix and um I don't know, other things, maybe. Cool. Wild and Kratz, check it out, guys. Wild Kratz. If you have kids, it is a fantastic show because it's super educational. It's And it's and kids love it. Like, kids love it. Josh Dallas, who it plays my TV husband on the show that I'm on right now, um, his kids are, like, crazy about it. So every once in a while, he'll be like, my character's called Aviva, and he'll be like, can you send us, like, an Aviva message? <laughs> Thanks. I'll like record, record a, a voice oh, that's sweet. Uh, like, up or whatever it is. Um, but it's like super science based and very educational. It's all about animals. It's really great for kids. But um, cool. that show, it, I mean, it's so it's been going for a long time and it makes me really happy. But also because people will always say to me like, oh, my God, that is my kid's favorite show. Or, oh, my God, my kid learned more from that show than they learned from TV. I mean, I mean, from school. school. Yeah. 
and that's just nice. Like that's a nice. Of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. I certainly struggled with school when I was younger and was a very visual learner. And uh, most of the ways that things were being taught to me just weren't entering my brain. And I found so much more um, stimulus through, through yeah, people who were doing videos and stuff. And like, I remember watching like Bill Nye the Science Guy and like yeah. learning a ton of stuff from that. Cause it was like, I can actually see what they're talking about. They're like actually doing the experiments and the things and like, but if you just write down all these words and numbers on a piece of paper, it's like kind of boring and doesn't really stimulate you. You know what I mean? And you know, children, their attention span is like zero. You have to like do something to like really capture their, uh, you know, attention. And so are your kids the age where they're, they're into your show or are they, are they past it or? They're um, my, I, my kids are two and four. Well, almost five. Her birthday's coming up soon. Oh, okay. um, and she very much is he will watch whatever she's watching or do whatever she's doing um but the truth is like i really don't let them have that much screen time so um and i also if they are watching screens it has to be in french and um i didn't voice aviva in the french version of that show so my daughter always says well, if I, if I can't watch you, then I don't want... Anyways, she has her, like, one show that she watches when I let her um, watch TV, and it's in okay, French. That, that was my next question, which was, like, do your kids recognize that mommy is Aviva? And do, like, do they hear your voice? Well, she will brag about it all the time. Like, when she meets yeah. other kids, she's like, my mom does the voice of Aviva. Like, she's... <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I remember I, I saw this... I saw this uh, Instagram video of The Rock, and uh, he does this character from um, Moana. And, oh yeah. Um, and so he has this video of him, his daughter, who's like a, you know, a couple years old, like wants him to do the song from Moana, and like basically like begs him to do the song like at all times uh, of the day. And so he just does all these videos where he's like singing the Moana song like as his character, and she's like again, again. <laughs> again he's like okay he's like maybe i shouldn't have told her that i was the voice like maybe that was a bad idea um but uh but that's that's so awesome that you can kind of interact with your kids in that way and they can kind of like see this cartoon but it's mommy's voice and like that must be kind of so cool um for, for them to see yeah yeah very cool is. very cool and were you working on anything like before this whole thing shut down um, well, we had just wrapped season two of Manifest, and then I had done, like, right before the shutdown, thankfully, because it was nice to get something in, I had just done um, a fil an independent film called Maternal, um, which I don't know when that's going to come out now, because they kind of wanted to do the, the festival circuit, and yeah. I don't know. If festivals are I know, all the festivals are canceled, they're doing all virtual now. Yeah, and I've been um, recording audiobooks in my closet. <laughs> Why, when this, when this happened, we very quickly, my partner um, is a journalist and he's in the midst of working on two big podcasts right now. And so he also needed a good recording space. So when this happened, we very quickly transformed one of our closets into a recording studio. I just so did the exact same thing. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like literally finished it like four days ago. So I like even to the reason I keep drinking my mouth is so dry because I've been in there for hours and it's like it's a closet so you know it gets warm in there. Yep. So I've been recording for the last several hours in there. Um, but it's been great because it's nice to at least the one I'm doing right now is not is um, nonfiction. So it's less artistic but the one I did before was this beautiful book it's coming out in June called The Ghost in the House and the book and the audiobook will come out at the same time. And it's just so, it's such a beautiful story. And um, I really like it. I was like, I, I don't know, it's funny. I've done a couple of audiobooks that are that novels that are just like such beautiful stories that, um, and I loved it so much that I was like, I think this might have been like my best acting job ever, even though you're like, you know, there's no fame or notoriety or like nobody's telling you good. I mean, like maybe one person is telling you good job, but like <laughs> the people listening to it aren't going to applaud you. And sure. You know, but you're um, like acting in a vacuum. Yeah, it's difficult. Totally acting in a vacuum. And, you know, it's not it's not like a lot of money or anything. And it's very hard work. For but, sure. Long hours. Yeah. Yeah, but um, so rewarding just 
because you you know you get to play again doesn't matter what you look like so you get to play every character and also the narrator or you know if it's not a narrator's not a character and and you get to tell like you get to like truly tell a story and I remember when I did my first one I was like oh like this is it like this is the thing that when I was you know young and was like this is what I want to do it was this like you know Crazy. Yeah, I remember having like, like all these dreams, I still have them, um, of like, being like, David Attenborough has totally just done it. Like, that's <laughs> the dream. Like, that guy yeah. is just he figured it out. And I'm like, if I could just watch videos of animals and talk about them, I think <laughs> I've got the key to life. Like David Attenborough just like, figured that out. So I was like, yeah, him and and uh, Morgan Freeman, you know what I mean? Doing all those like nature, it's just amazing, it's amazing. But like you were saying, like when you're very interested in what you're you know, talking about, you just light up, right? And you were saying yeah. you were so moved by this story and you were so interested and invested in it that you probably did like the best acting job you ever did because you cared about it so much, you know? I honestly, like I was so connected to the work, like they were, you know, when I'm usually when I'm doing film and TV stuff and I have to cry or like feel sad or whatever, I kind of like sometimes will have to pull something from my own life mm -hmm. to those emotions to be truthful, sure. which is I think that's okay. Like I'm being truthful at least, it, but it's like my, my own yeah. sadness. But like this book, like there were parts where I'm and and uh, the other one that the first one that I had done did the same thing to me where I'd be reading it and just like weeping as I'm reading and so moved and connected. Oh my God. Bad thing. In now, what, now were, had you kind of read the book before and then recorded it or were you kind of going oh. in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it, I read the book and then I'll read, you know, like my chapters that I'll be recording the next day, like the night before. And then you read it when you're reading it. And then you listen to it because you want to hear how it ended up sounding. So you end up like very, it, kind of very close to these books because then you're like, well, I don't normally read books four times. Right. You know? I've never done that. So actually, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're having this conversation because I'm curious about how it works. Um, when, you're, when you said you play all the different characters, is that a creative choice with certain books? Or is that just kind of the standard? Like is like one author like, oh, I don't want you to do different voices. I want you to just kind of be the narrator. And when I speak and when someone speaks to just kind of speak the same way or or is like, is it change from project to project? Or do you find when you're doing these that they they prefer that you kind of make the voices of these characters and yell or scream or when the person's getting mad or. Yeah, you. So, OK, so it's a good question because. Um, uh, so most of the time, yes, like you, the one person who's hired to narrate will read all the parts. And, you know, like generally you're not doing like really different voices because then it can right. sound silly. Um, but you do, like I do anyway, like find, you know, a, a slightly different pitch or a slightly different cadence. Right. So it's more of a subtle shift as opposed to sort of trying to find a voice for the character. Well, it's, yeah, it's not super subtle, though, because sometimes yeah. the two characters are just talking to each other and you need to right. know who's, you do yeah. need to differentiate. Like, one that I recently did, the narrator was also a character in the book. So when I was narrating, mm -hmm. when I was her voice narrating, I had to sound a little bit different than when I was her speaking, you know, sure. so kind of like an inside, like one is kind of like a little bit sort of like, ooh, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like an inside and an outside voice. I don't know. Yeah, that. that makes sense. Yeah. I think it would come to, if you were to like read a passage out loud from a book where a character narrates and then that right. character, it would probably come to you naturally. I think it's like. No, they're, they're, they're different sort of registers. When you're speaking yeah. to someone needing to yes. communicate and when you're just reading. Uh, yeah, they're definitely two different kind of gears. Yes, exactly. Very, very cool. So, very cool. Yeah, and then some like the first book I did had a lot of accents in it. Like a lot of the characters were accented, so which is it kind of helps because then you don't have to find as much, you know, you don't have to worry so much about differentiating the voice mm -hmm. if you're the accent. But then we would have there were many characters who had the same accent, but we were kind of differentiating how strong that accent. Would, like they were all from the same place, but some would maybe have like a stronger accent, and some would have a more subtle one anyway but to answer your thing I, I recently came across a book um 
I can't even remember the name of it. Oh, it's called This Is Not the End of Me. It hasn't come out yet. Mm -hmm. But it's written by a, it's a nonfiction written by a woman who was a journalist who had befriended some, he was her wedding photographer and they had become very close friends. And then he unfortunately got cancer and died. And he wanted to, he had reached out to her because he wanted to document, he wanted to make something to leave behind for his young child about mm -hmm. just was and maybe his struggle with cancer or something. I'm not exactly sure because I haven't read the whole book. But the way that they are doing that one is that they have one actor because the book is written sort of like her voice and then also his voice because mm. she did a lot of with him and stuff like that. Sure. And one actor reading him and one actor reading her. But that's the first time I've ever heard of that in an audio book. Okay. Yeah, I've not, I've not, I've not got any like book narrating uh, work. I've done like voiceover for like, you know, like commercials or video games and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but I've never done like a, um, a book. I would love to. That sounds like really amazing. Just kind yeah, of get in the studio and just dig in for hours and just. Well, especially if you're a reader, like, I mean, I'm assuming because yeah. you, yeah. you probably books and it's yeah, kind no, of I'd like... love that. I'd love that. It's weird kind of do it because I'm working on a video game right now and it's just sort of like I missed the, the going to the studio and parking my car and like going in and chatting with the people. And now I'm having to do it with my own stuff at home and kind of having yeah. like um, Skype-esque technology patching us in and you know, internet yeah. problems. It's a whole different um, ball game, but. Uh, and like everyone, if your studio was formerly a closet, then it's, it might sound good if you've like treated the walls and stuff, but it's probably not soundproof. So then like everyone else in the house has to be quiet and, you know, which is not the easiest thing when you have little kids, so. Sure, yeah, you're like, everybody shut up. Mommy's working for the next two hours. <laughs> I was even seeing some things that like they can do, like they can do um, the facial stuff from the video. Oh, like, really? From, yeah, that they're they're they have the technology now, so that like if I was your engineer right now and you were like voicing a character, I I can like put points all over your face, and they can do the facial um, recognition stuff for the for the video game to to you know match over your mouth and your eyes, which is like crazy they can't get your body because you're not in the studio with the motion caption all right. that kind of stuff but they can at least start to put your face together and stuff like that just from um having a video feed of you while you're doing the voice yeah. um so well, um yeah i think this whole crisis has like kind of forced a lot of technology and and things to happen yeah yeah which is cool yeah yeah it, it is it'd be some I've been seeing uh, so many people writing manifest, manifest, manifest. We love manifest. What they're writing. So this Hi. is, uh, this is your show. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this manifest project. Um, so manifest is a show on NBC. We've done two seasons. Um, and it's kind of the tagline that they tell us to use or always use and we all use is um lost meets this is us so and i never watched actually either of those shows so but the, this, <laughs> like awesome. a drama so there's like a lot of family drama yeah. and the lost is that it has this very sci-fi element so basically the premise is the story is centered around a family the stones who um are coming back from vacation and um you know, the the announcement comes over the thing, like who wants to take a bump for 400 bucks? And the dad and the son of our twins, we have um, twins, decide to take the bump. So they're on a different flight than the rest of us. And the plane um, the, is like a normal flight, it lands. And when they get off the plane, they learn that they've actually been gone for five and a half years. So for them, it felt like a normal three hour flight, except for some weird turbulence. But when they get home, um, the planes landed and they learned that they've been, everyone who wasn't on that plane five and a half years have, have passed. So our twins are now 10 and 16. And um, it's, you know, so it's this crazy thing of this family that's, you know, been torn apart in this awful way and then brought back together in also a crazy way. And in the first season, my character, I play the mom, the wife, and in the first character, uh, the first season my character had moved on so there were there was another man in the picture and you know there was kind of the challenge of that 
which the fans did not like. Like they, <laughs> they hated me. They were like, "How dare you? Oh, How dare you take him back immediately and not have any complicated feelings about that?" I know. The fans just want everybody to be together and happy and there is absolutely no drama. And I'm like, I know, but then there would be no drama. The show would not be exciting. There's got to be that push and pull, right? <laughs> I know. I My low power thing just came on, so I missed half of what you said. But I think I know what you said. But yeah. I'm just saying that the fans are always mad when like you break up with someone on a show. Yeah. You know what I mean? They but want everything to be perfect all the time. But please realize, fans, that's what makes it interesting. Yes. Constantly interesting. It's not interesting if we're all just happy and we get along. You wouldn't want to watch the show. Um, yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You just wouldn't. Trust me. Yeah. So then it, it kind of goes on from there. There's like, uh, you know, whatever the family issues, the like, the boy had cancer and then the cancer kind of gets better because in the five years that he was gone, there have been some advancements. And so that's kind mm -hmm. of a good thing. And, um, but then there are like these, the, the people who were on the plane start having these kind of, um, visions and stuff like that that they call callings and they're sort of like drawn to like solve this greater mystery that i think at the end of six years should be explained where the plane went and how it disappeared and you know and then there are like hate groups that pop up that like you know are threatening to us and the other passenger returning passengers and stuff like that it's very it's very a lot of drama it's like a very networky you know, like edge of your seat kind of show. I have to check it out. I have to watch you in action <laughs> on, uh, on your latest project. Yeah. So. Uh, let's take some some uh, comments and stuff like that. Do you guys have any uh, questions for, for Athena and I, or maybe talking about some of the things that she's talked about today? Any questions maybe about her new show even, or or um, anything you guys want to want to say to us? Yes. Hi. Rainbow. <laughs> Manifest is the best. See, all these people love your show. Oh. Will there be another season of Manifest? Well, that's a question for Athena, not for me. Oh, um, so it hasn't been announced yet. Um, and I don't, I, I can't tell you for sure, but I would be, I'm very confident in saying that I think yes. However, I don't know when, like, people are gonna start filming things again. Like, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a strange time. We had to shut down our our season early, uh, unfortunately. Uh, oh. we, did, we didn't get to finish it, so uh, we had a, we had like three episodes left. So, in the grand scheme of things, it was it was okay. But uh, but yeah, we had to kind of we had three episodes still to, to shoot. So we had to make the episode that we were at our finale, which totally was not our finale at all. Oh. Um, so with some kind of editing and stuff, we kind of had to make it into, you know, what would be more satisfying kind of finale as it wasn't wow. supposed to end the season. And uh, I think another couple shows were in that same uh, category as well. So um, we'll see, oh. we'll see what yeah. happens. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for, for coming on and reading these poems. I love the poems you brought and um, I'll get the name of them and I'll post them for you guys so you guys can look them up. Uh, yeah, the first one that you brought about the French and English is just so beautiful. Um, I think I lost the English, sir. Did I lose the theme? I before we go off. Uh, every voice is all Skype. I don't know. Hello. Hello, I'm still here. Ah. Okay. I'm hearing like bits and pieces of you. Yeah, me too. Okay, well, I don't know if you can hear this, but thank you so much for having me. This was really wonderful, and it was very nice to meet you. Kind of and and connect, out. and maybe one day. Well, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I can't hear you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm typing. I'm typing. Thank you for having me. Damn. Uh, can I reconnect or something, maybe? Oh, okay, she said, know. thank you for having me. Okay, she signed off. Um, damn. Okay. 
Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to say goodbye to you um, properly, but 